Welcome to today's webinar about using Coreform Qubit for CFD. I'm Matt Cedarberg, the CEO of Coreform. I'll be one of your hosts today. So we're going to wait and start about two minutes after the hour. Okay. So as I mentioned, so I'm Matt Cedarberg. I'm the CEO of Coreform. We've got a few of us on the line today to field questions. The ones that you'll hear from today are Randy Morris, the head of sales at Coreform, and then our special guest, Yoshitero Tokuyama. He is the, the distributor of Coreform Qubit in Japan. So this workflow will be about using Coreform Qubit in a CFD workflow. So just a few words about Coreform before we jump in. So we are the fastest growing CAE company, I think 5,000 last year. We are headquartered in Orem, Utah, but um, ever since COVID, we've gone to be a remote first company and have employees across the United States and Europe. So the reason the core form was founded was to commercialize next generation isogeometric analysis technology. And we now have a solver called Coreform IGA. We gave a webinar about that two weeks ago. You can find a recording of that. And if that's of interest to you, we'd love to share more details with you about that and, and uh, get you using that software. But this webinar today is about Coreform Qubit, which is an advanced measure. And so we acquired the software a couple of years ago to be the foundation of our technology platform for Coreform IGA because of the strong hex meshing in that software. Um, but what was a surprise to me was that about half of the Coreform Qubit users, this was formerly called Trellis, you actually use for CFD meshing. And so that's what we're gonna be focused on today is benefits that you can get from using Coreform Qubit for CFD. So the reason why we selected this presenter, Tokuyama-san, he is probably one of the premier users of Coreform for CFD in, in the whole world. And um, so we're excited to, to have him present um, this webinar today. So I'll turn it over to Randy to share a little bit more and to introduce Tokuyama-san. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, as you can see, our webinar today is divided into two main parts. And the first part that Tokyo Masan is going to talk about CFD meshing, how, how, to, how to think about uh, computational fluid dynamics, how to think about meshing for that, how to think about the physics involved. It's a little bit of a primer. So if you're new to CFD, this will be very new information. And if you've been around for a while, well, um, it'll be a good reminder and a good uh, setting the table for the rest of the webinar. But we'll talk about Qubit then. And, and Tokyo is going to give uh, four uh, sort of power tips in using Qubit in order to make CFD very effective. And you can see those right there. Um, uh, and the second half of the webinar will be on that, which will include some demos. I just wanted to say, I saw uh, a portion of a, a demo this morning and uh, one of the really neat benefits of these webinars is you have a person who isn't you using Qubit. And it's always interesting to see how somebody else uses the product, right? What, what techniques do they use for creating geometry? How do they set up journal files? How do they uh, think about using Qubit? And so, you know, I think you might even, if you're a old time CFD person, you know Qubit, you still might pick up some tricks today that will be useful as you try to do things more efficiently. So the objectives today, uh, the objectives always is to help you produce better products, right? We want you, since we're all flying in the airplanes you make and, uh, and the engines are attached to them, somebody needed to use Qubit on some of these newer engines that broke over the last two days maybe. But we want better products in the world and we want you to be able to bring your products to the market faster and with more confidence, more efficiently. Training is always a big deal. So uh, hopefully today, uh, Tokyo san can give you some ideas of how he uses Qubit, which might minimize some of your training needs. Just make a note that if you want some training, you can come to our site, you can go to his site, JPMA, it's, well, it's Japan m and so JPMANDT.com. It's in Japanese, but my Google uh, Chrome will translate it nicely. And he's got a ton of uh, little tutorials and tricks and things for setting up uh, using Qubit to set up CFD. That could be very beneficial for you. And uh, 
today he's going to make a strong pitch that Qubit helps him and his customers reduce labor costs significantly. So I'm anxious to see uh, how that all plays out. Toki Amasad himself, uh, again, he was a CFD engineer since about 1998. Uh, founded that to assist Fluent users to transition from Gambit to Qubit. Fluent guys know that uh, Gambit was the, um, the default preprocessor for Fluent for many, many years. As it turns out, Fluent and Qubit have a common ancestor. It might be a great grandfather or a great grandmother, but they, they had a common beginning at one point. And then uh, the person who made Gambit went back to Sandia National Labs and then grew the Qubit program from there and Gambit, Gambit grew on its own. But Q, Gambit users know that the look and feel of Qubit is very similar. Uh, it's very popular for those who are transitioning away from Gambit onto another preprocessor and uh, Qubit's a good choice. Uh, I, I met Tokiyama in 2008. He was our first uh, as C Simsoft. Uh, and Trellis. He was our first uh, non-US distributor and he's been highly, highly successful. We can't talk about his customers, um, but every major brand in Japan that you can think of has an installation of Qubit and engineers using Qubit and uh, very successfully. And like Matt said, he might be the best in the world at uh, using Qubit for CFT, probably is. He's got what, almost 15 years experience now doing it, and uh, he knows he knows how to make it great. He might talk about this. He was just recently granted a patent in Japan for some of his workflows, and uh, we congratulate him for that. Let me uh, click that. So today, uh, webinar. So we have the Q and A that's part of the webinar itself. And uh, Carl Merkley and I uh, will answer as many questions as we can in the Q&A. Um, others will save until the end, but for the most part, we're probably going to ask you to post uh, questions about the webinar uh, on our forum at forum.coreform.com. And Tokiyama will be, it'll be more comfortable for him to answer those questions in the forum. Um, his English is good, but maybe not uh, a lot of confidence in a live situation with uh, a lot of quick questions. So we'll direct you to the, to the forum for most of those. If there's some low hanging fruit that we can answer, we will. Um, and I'll also send out this presentation and Tokiyama's speaker notes to everybody who's registered via email. And we'll also post those on the webinar, uh, on the forum following the webinar. All right, with that, I will stop sharing. And Tokiyama-san, um, here we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Guideline for creating mesh for CFD and the importance of quickly mastering Qubit. Once you understand this concept, you will be able to quickly create the mesh you want. Hi, my name is Yoshite Tokiyama. What do you think is the mesh scheme with best accuracy for CFD? Is it some map, map, or tetra, or polyhedra? <laughs> Customer often ask, doesn't Qubit automatically create all hexamesh? Also, can't you create a beautiful hexamesh of the entire model domain. The question is also asked, the image of a beautiful mesh in the mind of a customer who asks such a question is more likely to look like a figure, multi-block structured grid, isn't it? The image is the surface of the object is beautifully meshed with BFC and the mesh topology of the structured grid is attached near the object. <laughs> is it possible to create such a mesh for the geometry in figure A and figure B? Yes, you can. Is it easy? 
So, can we create such a mesh for the space surrounding this solid shell? The answer is A, yes, but B is not possible. You know why, right? The front and the back of this structure are turned upside down. Therefore, it is not possible to create a continuous mesh in a BFC type multi block structure grid. So, can we create an all hexa mesh for the space surrounding this shape? The answer is yes, BFG type multi block structure grid just cannot mesh continuously. But using algorithms like Sculpt, all hexa mesh can be easily created. However, the number of mesh elements required to represent a shape is very large. <laughs> the typical feature available in Fluent and the relationship between computer and memory are summarized in table A and B. As you can see from this table, a user who needs to perform CFD simulation on a computer with 16 gigabytes of memory can only express the data with a resolution of 200 per direction. That is only 200. A resolution of 1,000 mesh elements means that each mesh is only one millimeter in a one meter analysis domain, which is nearly impossible for your PC to represent a one millimeter object in a one meter analysis domain. A resolution of 100 mesh elements means that each mesh is only one centimeter in a one meter analysis domain. And the average PC today can only represent objects that are one centimeter in a one meter analysis domain. A customer in the construction industry once asked me to simulate the effect of a balcony riding on window glass in a high rise apartment building. You can already see that it is impossible to do this analysis by direct simulation in the current computing environment, right? So it is important to design a mesh that can reproduce the phenomena more accurately with a realistic mesh size. Today, <clears throat> I will talk about the fluid and heat transfer simulator as an example. Also, CFD is assumed to be an unstructured CFD solver for finite volume methods, such as fluent. For structured grid solver, the story is a little different. I would like to start with a simple question. What kind of mesh would you create for this kind of geometry? Think about it. I do not know what kind of mesh you have in your mind, but one thing I can tell you is that the mesh you imagine will never match exactly. For example, some of you might have imagined a mesh topology close to the structured grid as shown in figure A. Some of you might have imagined a mesh topology of the BFC type structured grid as shown in figure B. And some of you may have imagined a mesh as shown in figure C and D. Which of these mesh have a smaller number of elements? and good mesh quality. 
it is the type of mesh in figure A, do you think this mesh is the best for CFD simulation? Think about it for a moment. The answer is sometimes it's uh, suitable and sometimes it's not. If the mesh quality is good, the simulation will be stable. However, good mesh quality does not guarantee the best simulation accuracy or the best results at all. <laughs> Here is another question. Do you think the best CFD mesh can be created before the simulation is done? The answer in general is no. If you have the best CFD mesh before your simulation, then you do not need to do the simulation. The best CFD mesh is the simulation result itself. A good mesh is one that can reproduce the real phenomena with high resolution. The skills and point needed to create a good mesh are the three listed here. One, the user must be able to imagine the desired hexa mesh in order to reproduce real phenomena with high accuracy. Two, the user must be familiar with physics. That is, the user must have an image of the flow before creating the mesh. Three, if the user does not have an image of physical phenomena, the mesh cannot be created to reproduce the phenomena with high accuracy. In order to create the best mesh, there is sometime, something that user needs to understand. CFD is computational fluid dynamics, where the Navier-Stokes equation are solved numerically. A more generalized version of Navier-Stokes equation is called the advection diffusion equation. The advection diffusion equation for momenta or velocity is the Navier-Stokes equation. I think the most important thing to obtain better calculation result in CFD is to reproduce the velocity field more accurately. Whether it is a steady state analysis or an un unsteady analysis. In other words, it is important to accurately reproduce the advection phenomena the next important thing is to reproduce the diffusion correctly. In a flow field, physical quantities are transported by advection and diffusion. For example, it is easier to understand heat transport if we consider it as an unsteady phenomenon. Consider the situation as shown in the figure. The temperature of the water in the bathtub is transported by advection and diffusion. The upper half of the water in this bath is 100 degrees Celsius, and the lower half is 0 degrees Celsius. Think of a situation where the flow of water is completely stopped. Here is the one question. After one minute, what is the temperature of the place one? A, 100 degrees Celsius. B, 50 degrees Celsius. C, about 19 degrees Celsius. The answer is A. Almost the temperature will not mix. This can be easily estimated as shown in the table. 
I will take a few days, it will take a few days for the temperature to freely mix. There are many people in the world who are considered to be shared expert, but the only real shared expert are actually those who understood the answer to this question easily enough to understand the diffusion specific, uh, specifically. <coughs> Conversely, if you do not know the answer to this question, you do not even understand diffusion. If you do not understand diffusion, it is difficult to get the right answer in CFD. I would like to ask a question in a different way. Consider the situation as shown in the figure, what of 100 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius is flowing at one meter per second from the inlet. What is the temperature of the place one near the outlet? A, 100 degrees Celsius, B, 50 degrees Celsius, C, about 19 degrees Celsius. The answer is A, almost the temperature does not mix. The water at the inlet will be at the outlet in one second. In other words, it is the same as the previous question, how much will it mix after one second? It hardly mix at all. As you can see from this simple question, diffusion alone does little to mingle physical quantity. The most effective way to move physical quantity is through advection. You might empirically feel that the water and hot water are mixing more quickly. That, that the temperature in the bathtub is mixing more quickly and is 50 degrees Celsius. That is because the stirring by advection creates a lot of eddies of various size, local point of view, advection. And the effect of eddies promote heat, heat diffusion. This is called turbulent diffusion from an unsteady instantaneously and local point of view, it can be thought of as advection as diffusion and diffusion. If you look at it in a steady state, you can think of it as a turbulent diffusion phenomenon. Let me try to put this in perspective. I said that physical quantity in a flow feed are transported by advection and diffusion. And I will add the phenomena of turbulent diffusion to this. This is summarized in the table. If I, a person moving relative to the flow sees this phenomena, the effect of advection becomes zero. In other words, the only phenomena that carry temperature will be turbulent diffusion and diffusion phenomena. If there is no turbulence in the flow, there will be only diffusion. In fact, there are another phenomena in CFD that can carry temperature. It is called false diffusion. Depending on the distribution scheme, this false diffusion can instantly carry the temperature from the element wide to about three times the maximum element wide. This effect is almost the same for both hex and the tetra mesh 
with the same discretization scheme for the same width of pole diffusion. Pole diffusion occurs in both hexa mesh and tetra mesh. A hexa mesh does not mean that there is no pole diffusion and the accuracy is good. Pole diffusion disappears only when the velocity fit and the mesh are parallel. In other words, there is no pole diffusion only in the mesh along the streamline. In other words, the best mesh is the one that flows the streamline. In terms of computational cost, the cost of creating a mesh along the streamline is much smaller than the cost of reducing the mesh size. The effect of this fall diffusion on the accuracy of the simulation can be neglected in many cases, except near the wall, where the effect of turbulence diffusion by the turbulence mode is significant. <coughs> the effect of fall diffusion on the accuracy of the analysis is in the region of laminar flow, where heat is transported. Uh, transferred only by the effect of thermal diffusivity. The problem of hole diffusion is also a major issue when solving species transport, which involves combustion. Gas, that should not mix, but due to hole diffusion, they do. As a result, they burn well. Also, temperature inside an enclosure that generate heat and con contain a lot of electrical components cools well. <clears throat> now, let's look at concrete example. Here, a gas with a diffusion coefficient of there is flowing at one meter per sec to the right, the temperature in the upper half is zero degrees Celsius and the temperature in the lower half is one degree Celsius. The answer to this question is very simple. Since the diffusion coefficient is zero, the answer will be all there in the upper half and all one in the lower half with no mixing at all. The element number of adjusted to be roughly 100. Only the top right geometry have 10,000 elements. When the direction of the flow and the direction of mesh does not coincide for both flat and tall mesh, we can see that whole diffusion occurs in both discretization schemes. It can be seen that the whole diffusion does not disappear even when the mesh wide is reduced to one ten, that is when the number of mesh is increased by a factor of 100. On the other hand, in the case where the flow direction and mesh direction are aligned, there is no whole diffusion at all. Regardless of discretization scheme, the results are due to the niche of CFD's unique upwind differencing scheme and should be taken into account when designing a CFD mesh. Method one, the mesh to be created along the velocity field. In other words, it should be created along the streamline. 
in qubit, you have to do is sweep the mesh in the streamline direction. I can hear you say, I don't know where's, where the streamline are. The effect of whole diffusion on the mesh created according to method one and on the mesh created with a normal structure grid is compared here. The red line shown in this figure a stream line. Figure A is created by method one. Figure B is the structured grid and the discretization scheme is first order upwind and figure C is third order upwind. From this figure, we can clearly see that the mesh created along the streamline has suppressed whole diffusion. We will define mesh creation method one a bit more and put it together with other general methods. These four methods are the meshing method necessary to accurately capture advection and diffusion with a small number of elements. Based on the mesh created in this way, the flow field is evaluated again and by repeating this procedure, it is possible to obtain simulation results that eliminate whole diffusion. In shift simulation, there are places where whole diffusion will affect the accuracy of the simulation and places where it will not. The user should understand this in advance and design a mesh that does not cause whole diffusion in the right place at the right time. Or place where turbulence diffusion is larger or where there is no change in the field. Designing with a tetra mesh will not cause any particular problem. However, in place where the influence of viscosity is strong, careful mesh design is necessary. If a freely automated mesh with high accuracy simulation result is possible, it cannot be achieved by AI technology, but only by physics. This is because the best mesh depends on physical phenomena and an infinite number of boundary conditions, and there is an infinite number of fields to be obtained with one best mesh pattern corresponding to one field. This concludes our discussion on CFD mesh guideline. Next. Next, what is important to be able to create a mesh using qubit? The answer is one, to draw the geometry you want to create by hand, and two, to draw the mesh you want to create by hand. Finally, simply command qubit to take the step that will accomplish the blueprint. Qubit will follow your command. Qubit is more than just a tool. What is important is your blueprint. To put it another way, as long as you have a blueprint, any tool that can draw a blueprint is good, whether you use Qubit, Ising, or FEMA. What makes Qubit different from other tools is that, one, Qubit understands human language. Two, if you command mesh volume all, Qubit will create mesh appropriately. Three, 
you can easily change the size of mesh and how it is designed. It is important to turn the buggy and chaotic conscientiousness into an orderly, <coughs> organized and clear awareness. We need to act consensually. Then you will notice that there will be a command that you can use. This is the same for everything. If you try to think like this on a regular basis, you will be able to have a better outlook on things to be more specific. One, understand the human language means that is, if you put the procedure into words, you can create the model. As a side note, there are only five operations and whole entities that can be used to draw a geometry, which are listed, listed here. To draw a model, you only need to understand five operations and whole entities. User will be able to draw freely by simply expressing what they want to do with these five operations and whole entities. The command for the operation you envision can be easily found in the qubit panel. <laughs> Next is the mesh. <clears throat> Here, you can see just how amazing qubit channel feature is. One, it can be written like a human language. Two, you can easily change the size of the mesh. And three, you can also easily change the size and mesh type. As I have already mentioned, if you command mesh volume all, Qubit will generate the mesh as it see fit. It is the best effort. There are some volumes, multi sweep type, where mesh are not generated automatically. In qubit, if there is a geometry that cannot be generated mesh, you just have to make the ungenerated geometry cut. In many cases, there are inconsistencies in the scheme automatically selected by qubit, while the geometry type is of the many to many times. I would not go into details, but there are two ways to do it. The user's only job is to do one or both of the following. One, hope volumes that cannot be meshed. Specify a scheme that can be meshed. Two, decompose a many to many type volume into many to one or one to one so so that qubit can automatically select a measurable scheme <laughs> here is a summary of the important things to know about using the semi-automatic hexa meshing feature in mesh volume all Qubit is only a tool for the user to create the hex meshing they have imaged. Also, the user's main task is only to decompose the many-to-many -many volumes into many-to-one or one-to-one. -one. Thinking about this is not the job of Qubit, but of the user. Hmm. <laughs> I will say it again about the greatness of all 
and qubit journal system. As I have just described qubit is one, intuitive geometry creation, two, semi-automatic mesh generation by simply sending command to qubit mesh volume all, three, using the journal file, it is very easy to change the mesh size and generation method. Maybe you are wondering, is it true? You will soon find out how great O is. Uh, I want, uh, now I would like to give a brief demonstration of Qubit 3D CAD and Jana 5 system. First, let me introduce the function of Qubit as a CAD system. I will draw a 3D picture by myself as appropriate. There is no particular meaning to this picture, but I hope you can understand that Qubit is equipped with sufficient functions as 3D CAD. First, I create a surface. I create the surface. I create surface. Next, I move surface. Using vertex. Next, <coughs> I subtract surface. Next, I create volume from this surface. Next, I modify this volume Next, I separate face. I delete these surfaces. Next, 
I modify this sheet body I modify this volume I try to match volume on. Qubit cannot create automatically. I need to cut this volume all one to one. I define the surface from these three points and cut. Match or mesh volume of. Next, uh, I want so this example. My boss asked me to create a smaller mesh whole tab 32. I only add <clears throat> this command. And this will off. It is easy to add mesh control. My boss said, I'm sorry, but can you create it with Tetra mesh? It is easy. I only add this command. And cut down the paste.
Next, <laughs> I show you more um, complex example. I create many volumes and uh, I try to mesh, mesh volume all. Should be automatically meshed using constant mesh size. I want to modify mesh, mesh distribution. I only add these three commands. Curve ID interval 10, curve ID scheme bias factor 1.25, Add propagate curve bias volume all. For example, I uh, remove this command. Hmm. I find this curve only here is biased. If I add propagate curve bias volume all, All propagate volume mesh is biased. This is very useful feature for CFT. Here are some more. Um, in this example, you will see the command always very useful. <laughs> For example, some of our customers may have at most 10 volumes. In such a case, it is hard to understand the advantage of qubit. Suppose the number of volume is 100. Let's say it takes three minutes to create a mesh for one volume, specifying the mesh size and mesh scheme. Then it would take 300 minutes to mesh 100 volumes. In other words, five hours. Well, this is an unacceptable amount of time, isn't it? If your boss asked you to change the mesh distribution, 
it will also take five hours to create the mesh again. CFD user sometimes have volumes of about 2,000 to 3,000. 3,000 volume is 9,000 minutes or 150 hours or 30 days if you spend five hours a day meshing. This is a very high level cost. If I search USCAE engineer fee on Google, I get average total cash compensation of $86,584. If you also search for US working hour, you will find one thousand eight hundred fifty fifteen hours. The unit price per hour is about fifteen dollars. If you do one hundred to fifty hours, the cost is seven thousand five hundred dollar. If you can create a volume mesh of in qubit, it will only cost you fifty dollar. Whether you have one volume, ten volumes, one hundred volumes, one thousand volumes, or ten thousand volumes, you can create the mesh by specifying all. Is Qubit an expensive product? If you have a rubber cost of $1,000 per day, you can make one mesh with Qubit and you got your money's worth. I finished my pro presentation. Nandi. <laughs> Thanks for that, Tokiyama san. We answered a, um, a few questions in the QA. And um, I'd just like to reiterate here. In the conclusion, the, the primer was very interesting. I'm not a CFD guy either, so all that information I thought was really, really useful. Um, and again, uh, contact Tokuyama directly. He had his website on the presentation. I'll send that presentation out today or tomorrow. And then some power tips. It's interesting to note, uh, uh, it was surprising to us to learn that uh, Tokuyama was using, and his clients were using Qubit for 100% of their geometry creation, which a little bit surprised us at SC SimSoft because it's not known as a CAD tool. However, it has all the CAD functionality at the basic level that one would want. And over the years, actually prompted by Tokiyama-san, we added additional functionality and we have on our product roadmap even more functionality so that users can stay in Qubit and create their geometry and avoid some of the problems that might occur when we uh, import uh, from other formats. So Matt, I believe that concludes our webinar. Unless you, is there anything you'd like to say in conclusion? No, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you so much, Tokuyama-san. That was, that was excellent. We really appreciate all of the preparation you put into this and and sharing your, your decades worth of experience. So we, we would have, we'd have time for just a couple of questions if anyone has any to ask live. Um, otherwise, as Randy mentioned, feel free to go to our forum and, and uh, we can continue the conversation there and we'll be answer, answering these questions or Topi Alman as well. So um, 
we'll, we can just hang on the line for a few seconds, but otherwise, thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Tokoyama-san. It's time for bed three in the morning at your home, right? 3 a.m.? Mm, no, 3, 3 a.m. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we'll, we'll let everyone go. Thank you so much again for coming. Talk to you later. Bye, everyone.